he's agreed to introduce himself. So go ahead, Edwin. Hello, folks. Uh, great to see you all here. This is very exciting. Uh, that that Bristol event, uh, uh, open uh, poly event uh, demonstrations, and I'm very excited for all of this. Um, yeah, my name is Edwin. I'm one of the uh, co-founders of Respira Works, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually overseas right now, so uh, I also have a recorded video. Um, won't be able to demonstrate it live, but I have, hope to be able to answer any questions that might come out of that. So I'll go ahead and share that video now. And sharing sound as well. Here we go. That's not working for me, Edwin. Can you can you try that again? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Say again. That is that's we're not getting the sound, or at least I'm not getting the sound. Could you maybe r refresh that or try it again, please? Okay. Let's see. Which means it can I'm run the only now. on the electricity, uh, providing the patient with ambient air that it draws in through the blower. Now, the ventilator is controlled through this touchscreen interface here. We'll begin by selecting a... Any sound now? We were hearing it then, Edwin. We were hearing it. So if you could just start over okay. and play from the beginning. So I for think. example, okay. I'm here today at Respira Works to give a quick hardware demonstration of our ventilator. Right now, the ventilator is connected to a quick lung here, which simulates the patient's lungs. Now, if the patient doesn't require supplemental oxygen, this ventilator is blower-based, which means it can run only on electricity, uh, providing the patient with ambient air that it draws in through the blower. Now, the ventilator is controlled through this touchscreen interface here. We'll begin by selecting a ventilator control mode. We'll select pressure control and hit confirm. Now, all of the respira respiratory settings are down here at the bottom. So, for example, we can set 25, confirm, and you'll see that we've also implemented alarms. So that rapid change in PIP set point did actually trigger an alarm, and we can hit pause here, and you'll see that the alarm continues to be persistent here. Let's set a PEEP of 10. And we'll ignore FiO2 for now because we don't have any oxygen connected. We can set a inspiratory time, so let's make that two seconds. And you'll see here that alarms also have a timer. So if an alarm is paused, when this timer runs out, it will reinitiate the visual and auditory alarm. So we're here at respiration rate, and we can set that to 20 breaths per minute. And you also see here on the display that it automatically calculates the IE ratio. So when you set the inspiratory time and the respiratory rate, you get the IE ratio here. And you get a live readout of the pressure, flow, and tidal volume that's being delivered to the patient. Now, if the patient requires supplemental oxygen, the ventilator is also capable of controlling off a standard pressurized oxygen, uh, hospital oxygen supply at 50 PSI. So we actually have a compressed air tank here to act as a stand-in, and I'll go ahead and connect that now. And for demonstration, we're going to set the FiO2 all the way to 100% to demonstrate uh, oxygen, pure oxygen control. So you hear the blower shut down there and the vent now running, uh, delivering to the patient off of the supplied oxygen. Now, uh, I've removed most of, the, uh, most of the screws off the lid of this container here, uh, of the enclosure, so that I can give you a hardware tour. But before I do that, I'm going to switch back to ambient air because we don't have that much air in the compressor tank here. So let's go back to 21% and we'll give you a little tour of the insides. And I'm going to try to do this while it's all still connected so we can see the internals operating. 
All right, so in here we have the blower, which is doing ambient air intake, which then goes to our custom designed stepper motor based pinch valve, which gives us a fast response rate and a low pressure drop across the valve. We have our custom designed and 3D printed Venturi sensors, which is how we do flow, that gets translated into a differential pressure, which goes into our custom designed circuit board uh, where it is uh, measured as flow. So we continue along this path to um, the outlet path to the delivered oxygen sensor. And this leads out to uh, what is now connected to the quick lug. In the oxygen path, we have oxygen entering here coming through our proportional solenoid, which is also controlled by our circuit board. And it then enters through its own, uh, through this hose here, through its own Venturi pathway. So we measure oxygen flow here. And then that enters and combines through this Y out to the patient outlet. Now, when the uh, gas returns from the patient, it comes through this entry here and travels through another one of our stepper motor based pinch valves. And this allows us to have very good, precise dynamic control of the PEEP pressure, the expiratory pressure. And that comes back through another venturi, so we measure expiratory flow as well and patient pressure measurement and that is how our ventilator works. Okay, thank you very much, Edwin. Um, we don't actually have any questions here. Um, uh, I'd like to point out that this is a very different mechanism than open vent Bristol. Uh, you could have a technical argument over which mechanism is better, proportional solenoid valves, blowers, or bag squeezing. Um, they each have advantages. I sort of support all of the approaches. Um, we don't have, we have one question um, from Eric Lund. Has any of the ventilators been able to scale up manufacturing? And if so, what are the numbers? Uh, I don't think we can answer that fully in the one minute that we have here. I think Darren Lewis is actively talking to manufacturers now. Um, I suggest that that question and other questions be answered in the social hour software. I would like um, Edwin and Jonas and Darren to go to social hour. They don't have to do it right now, either after the ventilator session is over or now and see if you can meet other people. That's somewhat experimental, but the idea is there in a relaxed setting you should be able to ask questions that take a little while to answer, okay? Um, so unfortunately, I have to be a little bit of a time tyrant to keep things moving here. Um, Edwin, are you gonna be able to go to social hour maybe after this ventilator session is over? Um, I'm, I'm still working today. I'm gonna to be at sea in an hour or so. So I will try to stay connected um, and be on social hour. I'll probably be text only. Um, okay but I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to stay on, but I, I am actually working here, so I will have to be somewhat checked out. Okay, well, thank you for your sacrifice. We can collect um, questions for Edwin, or you can reach, I think you can reach out to him. No, we don't have him in the program. In the um, Slack,